In this video, we would like to go over the radial velocity method. And we're going over the radial velocity method for this particular animation, a snapshot in time of this animation. Here we have a face on view of a yellow star that's orbiting a common center of mass. You can't see the common center, so I'll put a dot there. That's where that common center of mass is. It's common to both the host star and the exoplanet. The exoplanet is unseen. It is orbiting around the host star. It has enough mass that it's tugging on this host star, causing the host star to wobble in the sky. In the edge on view, we would see this host star wobbling in the sky as the exoplanet orbited around the host star. In the upper right, we are plotting the radial velocity on the vertical axis of the host star moving away from us and towards us over time. So time is on the horizontal axis and it always increases to the right. The bottom right is the spectrum. We're looking at the observed spectrum, which are the dark lines. And the spectrum from the laboratory are the dashed lines. We have a sodium doublet of dashed lines and we're looking at hydrogen spectrum, the Balmer lines. We're given a hydrogen alpha line at 656.28 nanometers. This wavelength is the laboratory spectrum, and it is that one, the dashed line right there, not the observed one. The observed one is shifted by an amount that's delta lambda from the one in the lab. And it's shifted by an amount because this star is wobbling in the sky. We want to find the maximum shift delta lambda of this observed H alpha. So we want to find out what is this shift. That shift right there is delta lambda. So we want to find out that shift between those two lines. We have an equation, delta lambda over lambda is equal to V over C. And this lambda on the denominator is the laboratory one or that one that is seen. We want to solve for delta lambda. Now that's related to V over C. Well, V is given by this radial velocity graph. We can see that the maximum value in either direction, positive or negative, is going to be around nine meters per second. And that's going to be our maximum V. So we're going to use our equation of V over C is equal to delta lambda over lambda. And we want to solve for this delta lambda. Our V is going to be 9 meters per second. It's our maximum value. And our speed of light we're going to use today is 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that's equal to delta lambda over lambda. And that lambda in the denominator, as we already said, is 656.28 nanometers. So 656.28 and nanometers is just 10 to the minus ninth meters. So we want to put a 10 to the minus ninth meters. So, or what we can do, well, let's first eliminate like values. We can eliminate a meter per second and a meter per second on the top. And we can solve this thing for for uh, meters, but let's go ahead and solve it for nanometers. So let's just go ahead and keep our nanometer units in here. So now what we need to do is we need to solve for 9 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th. Before we do that, let's multiply both sides of the equation by 656 0.28 nanometers 
so we can eliminate on the right hand side this 656.28 nanometers. So like I said, we can eliminate letters and numbers. So let's go ahead and cross out what we don't need. There we go. So let's carry down what we do want to keep. We've got Delta Lambda on the right hand side. Nothing else. On the left hand side, we've got a nine multiplied by 656.28 nanometers divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th. So let's multiply this all out. 9 times it by 656.28 nanometers. And I'm just looking up our Google calculator. I just went to Google and typed in calculator and I get our Google calculator. So all we did was 9 times 656.28. 9 times 656.28. We want to divide it by 3 times 10 to the 8th. So we divide it by 3, e, e, 8, and we get a value of 1.96. We can kick this 9 up to 2, and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 times 10 to the minus 5th. So we're going to get a 2 times 10 to the minus 5th. Units are nanometers a very tiny shift in the amount of wavelength is associated with an exoplanet orbiting around a host star that causes a wobble in the sky of something as low as 10 meters per second maximum shift in speed of the star towards or away from us. And that is an example of the radial velocity method.